You only need 1%, less than 1% of the Bitcoin network that's using vented methane and the entire network is going to be emission negative. So if you use that as your fuel source, that's 10 times more emission mitigating than even flare gas emissions. 35 mid-sized venting landfills, that's all it takes. And so that's a bit that I'm absolutely most excited about. There are other environmental benefits as well, but for me that's the most compelling because that's the reason that you absolutely do not mess with the code, you do not change it to proof of stake because that benefit is only available to you because of Bitcoin's high energy use. Today we are joined by Daniel Batten, a visionary entrepreneur, venture capitalist and thought leader in Bitcoin and sustainability. Daniel used to run two climate tech funds. He realized they weren't having a fast enough impact and pivoted to running a methane mitigation fund that could slash emissions using existing technology this decade, CH4 Capital. Daniel discusses how Bitcoin mining can play a pivotal role in methane reduction efforts, making the entire Bitcoin network carbon negative quickly. He also delves into the challenges of combating negative press, a common hurdle faced by emergent technologies. Get ready for another enlightening conversation on the true power of Bitcoin mining. Before we get on with the video, We'd like to introduce our sponsors who have made this series possible. Stampseed, The Orange Pill App and Swan. It's our mission to provide our audience with a safe, reliable and robust way to buy, store and learn about Bitcoin. Our partners are businesses and people we respect and are products that we at Bit Intelligence personally use. You're watching 21 Voices. Without further ado, here is Daniel Batten in Madeira, Portugal. I think having headlines w with the good things that Bitcoin can do just doesn't really generate as much interest. So there's an inbuilt incentive structure for newspapers generally to publish things which are negative, which are critical. And you, it's happening not just with Bitcoin, it's happening with AI data centers at the moment. Before that, it happened with the internet. If you keep on going back through history, it happened with television, with radio, with books, with the bicycle. There's a wonderful article in the New York Times about how bicycles, this is back in the 1800s or early 1900s, was going to cause dementia and was going to cause all sorts of psychotic episodes in people and how women were fundamentally unsuited to ride bikes, all sorts of stuff. And even expert medical opinions to say why uh, bicycle riding would cause psychotic episodes. So it's been the track record which accompanies any novel technology that until we understand it properly, it's human nature that in the presence of uncertainty, we tend to gravitate towards the negative, right? And there's a very good reason for that, and it's survival. Back in the day on the savannah, if you see some large shape on the horizon and you're not sure whether you're its food or it's your food, then if you assume in the negative and you're wrong, you avoid a meal. If you assume in the positive you're wrong, you get to be the meal. So w humans assume in the negative given the presence of uncertainty. So whenever you have a novel technology, it's uncertain. People don't know what the impact is. We have a predilection, not just newspapers, but people generally have a predilection to assume in the negative. And so that's every technology that's ever come along, including Bitcoin. So it's a rite of passage. And that's why I say to Bitcoin is, hey, it, it's, it's, it's universal. It doesn't matter what the technology is. Yes, probably Bitcoin gets a bit more attention because it threatens to disintermediate some pretty big players, including central bankers, who have some vested interests in maintaining their position that they've currently enjoyed. And so you can expect more FUD, probably not less, than a less disruptive technology. But fundamentally, what's happened is no different from what you've seen. And if you look at that, there's this kind of like peak FUD, you can say, for about in the first 10, 15, 20 years, and then it kind of ebbs off in a bit. And so that's kind of what I see happening with Bitcoin. It's novel anything, it's pushing through some barrier. People will tend to assume in the negative. And then it's done, everyone forgets it and everyone pretends they never said that in the first place. Because it's so laughable after the event. And a lot of the things that have, have been said about Bitcoin, even in peer-reviewed journals, have been laughable. And if you look at it objectively after the fact, you can see that it's laughable. It's laughable the idea that Bitcoin could use all the world's energy at any point in time. And we passed that date three years ago when some reputable scientific uh, magazine published that article that said exactly that. And it's using 0.09% of the global energy grid. So in terms of the positive externalities of Bitcoin, um, there are really many. 
And I think that's part of the problem. We have to whittle down and be clear about just two or three rather than me going through about 21 that I've enumerated so far. But the main ones are it has the ability to be the first network in the world that can mitigate more emissions than it creates without using carbon credits. And that's extraordinary. And the way you do that, the only way you can do that, is if your power source is emissions. And you might think, well, how can your power source be emissions? You know, you can't derive power from carbon dioxide. You can't put that in a generator and burn it. No, you can't. But you can buy another emission that's going into the atmosphere at an increasing rate, and that's methane, which is said by the United Nations to be our strongest lever to reduce climate change in the next 25 years by reducing our methane emissions. It's a fuel source. It shouldn't be going into the atmosphere. It should be used to generate fuel. So when you take methane that's currently going into the atmosphere, you stop it going to the atmosphere, you divert it into a generator that burns that methane and you use that for Bitcoin mining, you are mitigating emissions because whilst the generator will produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct, methane is 84 times more warming to the planet over a 20 year period than carbon dioxide is. So that form of Bitcoin mining is extremely emission reducing. At the moment, we have more than 20 Bitcoin mining companies who are mitigating methane, sending it to generators and using it to mine Bitcoin. That has a tremendously positive climate impact. Now, today, that total 7.5% of Bitcoin's total emissions are mitigated through that form of mining. And you might say, well, that's bad, that's still 92.5% is emissions. And you're right, but again, you have to look at trajectory. If you use that same argument with solar, you would have banned it in the 1960s or 70s or 80s or 90s. Because it wasn't up, even in the 90s, solar as a technology was still creating many more emissions than it was abating. And that's because it takes energy to extract from the ground, to extract, to uh, transport the solar panels, but most of all, to, to melt the silicon using coal furnaces to 1,414 degrees. And because solar was very inefficient for a long time, the amount of emissions it abated was tiny. So again, any line of reasoning that would have caused us to ban solar panels, we probably shouldn't apply to an existing novel technology, including Bitcoin. So okay, it has emissions today, just like solar did. And it has the ability to abate emissions, just like solar did. And it's only been 15 years, and already we've got 7.5%. That's at a faster rate than solar's gone as a technology. And the thing I get excited about is we only need another 35 landfills that are using methane as a power source, and that's going to mitigate enough emissions to offset the entire Bitcoin network. And that's extraordinary. 35 mid-sized venting landfills, that's all it takes. And, and so that's a bit that I'm absolutely most excited about. There are other environmental benefits as well, but for me that's the most compelling because that's the reason that you absolutely do not mess with the code, you do not change it to proof of stake, because that benefit is only available to you because of Bitcoin's high energy use. So now you look at the energy use and you're saying, hang on, this energy use, today it's creating emissions, but in the near future, that could create the abating of emissions. So it's not a bug, it's actually a potential feature. You look at something called emission intensity, and if you look at the emission intensity of the Bitcoin network, it's, that's how many grams of emissions per unit of energy that it's creating today. So back in 2021, it was 600 grams per kilowatt hour. Today, it's 250 grams per kilowatt hour. So it's gone down 350 grams per kilowatt hour in less than four years. Now, if it keeps on going at the same rate, then by Q4 of 2026, we'll have a negative network. Now it's not necessarily going to trend at that same rate because it's achieved most of that, not through methane mitigation, but through transitioning from coal-based fuel uh, to gas in the fossil fuel. And then the weighting of fossil fuel to renewables has also changed where it was mostly fossil fuel. Now it's mostly renewables. Uh, and, and we have very good data to back that up as well. So that would start to taper off if that was your only strategy to continue to reduce emission intensity. If you augment it with more methane mitiga mitigation though, you can keep on going at that same rate. So it's a little bit like Moore's law. It's not an immutable law of nature that will go emission negative, but enough people in the ecosystem focus on it and regard it as important, then we can absolutely hit that and we can hit that within a four year hold cycle. Please bear with us for a quick message from our sponsors. These videos take a lot of time to shoot and edit 
and we've partnered with brands we trust like Stamp Seed and the Orange Pill app in order to get the funding we need to bring you these videos every week. Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stamp Seed is fireproof, rust-proof, impact-proof, and easy to hide. It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. When I finally got Bitcoin, it hit me like a lightning bolt. This was the currency of the future, the only money that truly mattered. But there was a problem. I was a lone hodler in a sea of skeptics. That is, until I discovered the Orange Pill app. Suddenly, I was connected with a network of like-minded Bitcoin enthusiasts right in my own city. The Orange Pill app is more than just a social network. It's a community of passionate individuals determined to change the world, one Satoshi at a time. This series is brought to you by Swan and created by Bit Intelligence. Remember to like this video and subscribe to both our channels for more videos like this every week. It's extraordinary because if you think about Bitcoin mining what it is, it's the only industry I can think of in the world where the means of production of the thing has inherent value. So if you think of another uh, commodity that we use on a regular basis, such as shoes, okay, we understand that shoes have value and utility. We understand they have a carbon footprint to produce, but they also, um, they have some utility. So we say, well, that's kind of okay, right? Whether we should or not, who knows? But you wouldn't say that the factory in which the shoe is produced other than its utility to produce those shoes has any value to humanity whatsoever, right? I think we could all agree on that. But Bitcoin mining has independent utility to humanity outside the actual asset that it produces. I cannot think of another product or commodity or asset of which that is true, and that's extraordinary. And it's not just methane mitigation, it, it has environmental benefits, but it also has benefits in terms of stabilizing a grid. It has value in terms of reducing the cost of electricity, which again is different to what you've hear, heard in the mainstream media. The amount of methane mitigation in terms of a percentage, that's relatively small. That's only one, one and a half percent. But because it's uh, that form of energy is mitigating so many emissions, the net emission mitigation, that is 7.5 percent. And that's because methane is 84 times more warming to the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. So it has a, that small amount of mining coming from methane mitigation has a massive impact in terms of its net emission reduction, which is why you actually don't need that much of it to take the whole network to emission negative. And here's the even better bit. Uh, that's when we're talking about taking flare gas emissions. Now, flare is when you have something that's already been partial, the methane's been partially burnt. So that's, you've probably seen one, a picture of one on an oil field, and they, it's like a big candle of the air. The thing is, it doesn't burn all the methane, it burns about 91% of it. So you still get 9% that goes into the atmosphere, but that 9%, if you're using that, is still so sufficient. It's so, uh, such a big reduction of emissions, because remember, it's 84 times more warming over that 20 year period, that it's going to mitigate hugely. If, however, you're targeting sources of methane that aren't even flaring their methane, they're just venting it freely into the air, you're not getting 9% of methane, you're getting almost 100%. 10% gets naturally oxidized, so we'll say 90. So that's 10 times more methane. So if you use that as your fuel source, that's 10 times more emission mitigating than even flare gas emissions. So that's why if you're using that as your flare source, you only need 1%, less than 1% of the Bitcoin network that's using vented methane and the entire network is going to be emission negative. If we're using landfills and we're using venting landfills, uh, we spent about a year going through the numbers and working out how we could do it in a way that works, as you say, to make it profitable without needing government subsidies. And we figured we've found a way to do it. Because the wonderful thing is that, yes, it's going to cost more money to get that uh, landfill gas and purify it, send it to a generator. Generator is expensive. So there's no question you have to invest more capital to get it. But here's the thing, once you've got it, you've got the cheapest source of electricity you'll ever find. And because you're doing something which is so positive for the environment, you can also earn an ancillary revenue source called carbon credits. And those two factors mean that even when you talk about the additional capex, it makes total economic sense for Bitcoin mining companies to go in and do it. Batten makes it clear that Bitcoin mining holds immense promise as a catalyst for positive environmental change. 
by harnessing the flexibility of the business to adapt to fluctuating electricity demands and tapping into unconventional methane sources, Bitcoin mining has the potential to not only reduce emissions, but also drive the development of renewable energy infrastructure worldwide. Despite facing skepticism and negative press, the insights shared by Daniel shed light on the immense possibilities for Bitcoin mining to shape a sustainable future for generations to come. Stay tuned for more enlightening discussions and remember to subscribe for the latest recaps, insights and films about all things Bitcoin. What's up everyone? My name's Bevan and I'm the creator of the Bit Intelligence YouTube channel. We partnered with Swan for this original series so that we could reach the largest audience possible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to both of our channels below so that you don't miss a single episode. This is 21 Voices. If you want to watch another episode, try this one here. We'll see you next time.